All right, so let's talk about this Yahweh thing, okay? So I'm going to make this thorough with Hebrew. All right, so how many of you heard of that term, Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh at church? Okay, that thing is totally wrong. It is totally wrong. You can't even say Yahweh, okay? That one we're totally against. So in consonants, you got to understand this. The Hebrew Old Testament does not have vowels. It does not have vowels. It contains consonants. So in consonants, uh, this is how the name of the Lord is written as, okay? And what we Bible believers believe, how this is translated to in English is Yahovah, all right? Jehovah, all right? Yahovah. Now, the thing is this, is that it goes Yahovah, okay? That's how it goes. But in order to explain this, Jehovah, where that term came from, now this is very important why we believe in Jehovah, not Yahweh. You ready for this? This is very important. We believe that the King James Bible is given by inspiration of God. Amen? It's without error. It's the right book. What is the basis of the KJV? It's the Masoretic Hebrew. Now, people online better pay attention to this one, especially if you do believe the King James Bible is the Word of God. You don't want to go for this Yahweh business. Yahweh business was, it was born out of a critical standpoint by modern scholars to go against the KJV. You might say, why? Because this word Jehovah, you know where it came from? These guys. That's where it came from. Because the Masoretes, what they did was they added vowel points here. When they added vowel points in English, it was translated to Jehovah. That's what it was in English. Modern scholars saw that as an error in translation. So modern scholars, they went by a guy named Jacinius. Jacinius was the guy who created the word Yahweh. And he's a modern Hebrew scholar. Okay, I'm saying modern here because I need you people online to understand this. Modern Hebrew scholar. His name is Jacinius. Now, why did he believe this, this translation is Yahweh? This is what he bases it on. You ready for this? So he says that it's based on various Greek transcriptions, such as Yahweh, dating from the first centuries, uh, dating from the first centuries of the Common Era. But it's also based on theophoric uh, names. Now, what is theophoric names? So one, he's basing it off on Greek theophoric names. Okay, what theophoric names is certain people's names throughout different cultures. They were named that way after their God. So how they're trying to find this right translation of Yahweh is going by different cultures of how they named people and things of, from their God. So you see the problem already here? They're already conglomerating different cultural gods with the Hebrew God here. They're already making that assumption. That's important to understand. So theophoric names. Another thing right here is that um, it's also based off of the Samaritan pronunciation Yabe by Theodoret. Now, how many times did you see Hebrew here? Did you see Hebrew here? Did you see Hebrew here? They want to go by the true Hebrew name of God, right? Do you see Hebrew here? It is based on Greek, Samaritan, and Theophoric names out of different cultures. You know who's the Hebrew? This guy. These guys. These were Hebrews. These were Hebrew scholars long before Jacinius. He's a modern scholar. This is something you've got to understand why there's a big difference. Because if you want to get closer to the original Hebrew, who's the time period that would be obviously closer? Is it th these bunch of people or this guy? This bunch right here. Here's another thing. Didn't you know the Hebrew language was carried on by the rabbis and Jewish leaders that time? That's how Hebrew was preserved. People didn't, uh, the Hebrew language, it was becoming a lost language. The only way it was retained is because of their leaders. It wasn't until the modern century that they revived the Jewish language. So they're trying to retrace back. But guess what? It's already been a thousand years almost. 
But these guys carried it, remember? The, the scribes, the Jewish leaders, they're the ones retaining it. Who do you think is obviously more obvious? Especially if a modern scholar bases it off of this, who do you think is going to be more reliable then? Yeah, it's the Masoretes. And they're the ones that gave the name Jehovah. Modern scholars criticize the Masoretes as being inaccurate. So because these guys were inaccurate according to modern scholars, they said that the way, and you know what they're basing it on? Theory. They said they can't, it's not provable. They can't prove it 100%. They're basing it on theory that they just added vowels from Adonai or stuff like that, and that they're just adding it all over here, so thus it's a false name. So they're, make, they're saying all this stuff without 100% proof. So the thing is right here is that they're going by Jacinius. What? What's the basis? Based off of this. That's not even Hebrew. Now here's another thing is that the Aleppo Codex and a variety of biblical manus manuscripts dated between 700 and 900 support Jehovah. Another one is my Maimonides, I think that's how I pronounce his name, he's 1138 to 1204. He's a Jewish scholar, and he said that the Tetragrammaton, this thing, was pronounced Jehovah. So to say Jehovah was a made-up name until much, much later on, that's not true. There, were, uh, there are writings that preserve this name even before the first century. Here are several more examples. Sadia Gaon at 927 A.D., Jerome at 380 A.D., Origen from 250 A.D. There's also Gill's interpretation of Matthew chapter 5, verse 18. He supported that. He claimed Jesus Christ said it, but who knows. But aside from that, you also have Hillel the Elder and Shammai Division uh, at 30 B.C., the Karaites at 120 B.C. Then you also have Demetrius... Thalarius, librarian for, for Ptolemy II, Philadelphus, king of Egypt at 277 B.C. Now, don't say Jehovah is some made-up name later on, okay? This is during B.C.'s, even first century and early centuries, okay, of the Common Era. Here's another thing. This one is, uh, not only do we have, so let's lay down the evidences right here, okay? Let's lay down the evidences. One... If you want to go by Hebrew, let's go by Hebrew. Who's the closest Hebrew, huh? The closest Hebrew. We're going to go by closest Hebrew. This is not closest Hebrew. Neither is this guy any closer to the original Hebrew than these guys. I know there's a big gap with Masoretes in the original Hebrew, but I'll take my chances with them than this guy, who's much, much later. Okay? So let's use some head people. Let's use some, let's use some common sense here. Not only that, Hebrew was maintained because of these guys, Jewish leaders. That's how they preserved their he Hebrew. Then you jump all the way to the modern centuries, and then what? When it's like been over a thousand years. The second reason is because, not only that, it's because of basic grammar. Now, you might say, what? Are you kidding me? Yeah, basic Hebrew. Okay, now look at this. This is given as Yahweh, right? So it goes backwards. Hebrew is backwards, okay? So we're going to write it backwards here. So this is Yahweh. Whereas what we say is Jehovah. Okay. Now how they get Yahweh and Jehovah, this is how they explain it right here. So the, uh, this is by John Hint Hinton. He's, he's a PhD Harvard alumnus. He says, the Hebrew Vav is pronounced as V, not W. This error came about due to the misreading of German Hebrew grammars, which use W for the English V. Note, the German V is pronounced like the English F. It always puzzled me to hear atheistic scholars at Harvard pronounce the name as Yahweh when the same scholars would always pronounce the Vav as a V every other place that they use it. So that's a very good argument. Here's the thing right here, okay? This uh, Yahweh thing, this thing should be a vav, okay? A v sound, not a wuh sound, okay? It should be a v sound. That's basic Hebrew. Now, my question is this, is that with this v, okay, which shouldn't be a wuh, 
This is, okay, if you don't believe me, just look at your Hebrew alphabet. Go to your Hebrew alphabet, look at all these consonants. You'll see a V here. It's not a W. Okay, not even in basic Hebrew alphabet. Where they get this idea of a W coming from? Where did this W, Wookie, came from, huh? Where did this thing come from? Should be a V. This is basic Hebrew. That is beyond me, too. So they'll use some complicated arguments of theos, theophoric names and this Greek and Samaritan, etc. Et That's how they throw you off. But get your ears open and think right here. Wait, wait, wait. We're talking about Hebrew. Hebrew. See, they throw you off by using terminologies that you don't understand until the common man will explain you what the common meaning is and then you'll realize, oh, this theophoric thing is stupid. You know, that's what you're going to think later on. Now, why are they basing it with this what thing? Because here's my question. Why, if they think that I'm so stupid with Hebrew, then here's my easy question. Why would you only, only do this as a wa when every other v sound in Hebrew, that constant letter, is V. You pronounce it as V. But all of a sudden, when this one, you do it wa. That's a powerful Hebrew argument right there. Why all of a sudden only this word, only, but not in any other Hebrew word out there? Here's another argument. So in here, so when we uh, transliterate it, it can go ya or ja. It can go ya or ja. Now, if you remember my other video in, uh, concerning Yahweh, I was mentioning uh, different uh, Hebrew, Greek, European languages, Latin, Old English, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, how it would go, okay? So like uh, Jesus would be ja or Jesus, and then etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, the thing is this. How we can uh, match this just sound, okay? You can translate it, it ya, yeah, but this doesn't mean ja is a, ma the J sound is made up later. That's their argument. Their argument is it should be ya yeah at the beginning, not ja. Their reason is because the ja sound never existed until later on. It was always ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. But here's the problem right here. This is again by Hinton, all right, that uh, PhD Harvard alumnus. Quote, the sound of J, though originally printed as I, so in Greek is actually I. That's why with Jesus, it'll be Jesus. See? Jesus. But because Greek is Jesus, that's why you notice that Y sound, right, in Hebrew? So Hebrew can be like a Y, and then Greek I, and then later on in time, you can get a J. But here's the argument right here. The sound of J, though originally printed as I, was pronounced as a soft G. Didn't you know that? This is by Oxford English Dictionary, unabridged second edition. Oxford Clarendon Prince, 1991. For the word J. The J-E sound in Jehovah was spelled I-E and pronounced as J-E. You, know you know what the evidence for that is? Well, you know, uh, I don't think it's a just sound. It should be a ya, ya sound. No, look at old... English Bibles, and I, if you look at old English Bibles, and I bet you the, uh, even the 1611 KJV too, but I could be wrong. You know how they spelled Jehovah, Jesus, and all that? I. But they meant a just sound. But they all spelled it out as I. So just because it's a I at the beginning, that doesn't mean it's not a just sound. See, they're not thinking. They're not comparing. But here's another thing right here. English printers used J and I fonts interchangeably. During the 1600s, most languages began consistently using the extended I form, now called a J, to, re to represent, now listen to this, to represent the J soft G sound. So here's the thing. This is very interesting right here. This J thing, it's become a lot stronger, sharp, right? It's a sharp, it's jump. Jump, right? But back then, so if you give it like a thousand years, the, the sound will sound different, right? That doesn't mean it's not sounded that way. But the sound is just lighter. If you go lighter and lighter from j, 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 soft G sound, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, here's the thing, is that when you go lighter and lighter, it's going to eventually go to what? I and Y sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus. 
So the thing is this, see, that, kind, that sharpness eventually developed later on. But here's the thing. Here's another strong argument right here. Are, just because this sharp J sound didn't exist in Hebrew, that did not mean that they never said some kind of soft J version. You're telling me that out of the past 6,000 years of Hebrew history, they never used a, a soft J sound in any way? There has to be. So you see right here that just because that this one is just sharper in sound, it doesn't mean it's not pronounced that way. We just use it more sharply. That's it. We just use it more sharply. That's it. More stress on it. Doesn't mean it, wasn't, it didn't sound like that. No, it was a J sound. It's just a very soft form of that sound back then. But because it's so soft, that's why people who hear it might take it as a Y sound or a E a ya sound or a J sound. See, it depends on different people. So all people are different back then. So here's the thing. The point is, is that this doesn't mean that this is a wrong translation. This is right. And not only that, we can't really tell back then. We can't really tell back then because of the way that they pronounced words. Everyone was different that time. It was very different that time, the pronunciation of everything. But if people want to make a big deal about this uh, Jehovah business, the easiest thing is this. That is complete hypocrisy because why is it in all other Bibles, okay, why would you translate, so Jeho, right? Jehovah. Why would you translate it as Jehoiakim? Huh? Yeah. Why would you translate it as Jehiah? Huh? Jehoshaphat? Huh? What about Jehohanan? Jehoiachin? Jehoiada? Jehoram? And Jehoshua? And even in Hebrew, sometimes they'll do it that way, too. What do you do after that? See? If you're going to really get, insist that it has to be, you know, Yahweh, 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 then you got to do that. Uh, you got to do the same thing with Yahweh, Kim, Yahweh, Yahweh, Shaphat, Yahweh, Hanan, Yahweh, Why don't they do that even in Hebrew translation? That is strange, isn't it? Even in Hebrew translation to English, why didn't do the same thing with these words? Why is it only the name of God unless there's someone who hates the name of God? Right. Yeah. Amen. And you guys want to retain the true name of God? You're just giving more credit to somebody else who wants to attack the name of God, perhaps. But here's something else. I argued that Yahweh was a name from pagans back then. That's where the name come from. But if people doubt it, then this is by a Jewish article. This is by a Jewish article. It's by Ariel David, September 3rd, 2018. You know what his title was? Jewish article. When God wasn't so great, what Yahweh's first appearance tells about early Judaism. You ready? Now this is the first mention of Yahweh, their historical artifact. It's, it's from a Moabite stone. The oldest extra-biblical reference to Yahweh is in a 3,000-year-old Moabite steel which boasts of defeating Israel, may mention King David, and paints a very different picture of God than the one we know. That's the oldest evidence of Yahweh. You want to go by that now, huh? That treasure was a nearly 3,000-year-old inscription in which the king of Moab boasts of his victories against the kingdom of Israel and its god, Yahweh, called the steel of Misha. It contains the earliest known extra-biblical mention of the deity worshipped by Jews, Christians, and Muslims. And wait, 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 no, 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 don't put me in with that. Don't conglomerate me with different cultures of how they're using their name of their god. Since its discovery in 1868, it has fueled the argument over the historicity of the Bible. Uh, on one hand, the steel confirms some of the names and circumstances found in the biblical text on the monarchic period and may even mention King David himself. And it attests to the existence of a strong cult of Yahweh in ancient Israel. Let's keep reading right here. On the other hand, it suggests that the culture and religion of the ancient Israelites may have been radically different from Judaism today. The ancient Hebrews may have, had, may have been much closer to their much maligned Canaanite adversary than the Bible lets on. 
See, that's where they get their name of Yahweh from because of different cultures, how they took their names from their God. And that's how they can find the true word of what the Israelites may have called their God that time. Let's see right here. Scholars have had the Bible for millennia and parts of it are consider considered plausible by historians. But when you find an inscription that comes from the distance past, from the very time when these things happen, it suddenly become real says Matthew Richel, a professor of Hebrew Bible and one of the researchers behind an exhibition at the Collège de France in Paris celebrating the 150th anniversary of the Steele's discovery. It is again Chemosh who decides to restore Moab to its people and speaks directly to Misha, telling him, go take Nebo from Israel. Just as God routinely, just as God routinely speaks to Israelite prophets and leaders in the Bible, and in conquering Nebo, Misha recounts how he massacred the entire population as an act of dedication to his gods. The exact same word and brutal practice used in the Bible to seal the fate of Israel's bitterest enemies. Although there are only a handful Moabite inscriptions out there, uh, scholars had no trouble translating the steel because the language is so similar to ancient Hebrew. Oh, wow. Isn't that how they fool you? How they get to the closest Hebrew? Because in reality, they went to a Moabite stone. And it's so similar with Hebrew. So that's why we're going to use that. See, that's what they mean by Theophoric. See, they're fooling you. Of course, it is close to the original Hebrew. They're just not telling you that how they find out about the original Hebrew is the cultures during that time who are around the ancient Hebrews. That's how we can figure out what the original Hebrew was. How do you know that, buddy? How do you know that, man? Okay, so uh, there's so much to say right here. I got like pages, pages. I can't read all of it. But this should, this should convince you that this is a pagan name, okay? It's, a, it's from some kind of Canaanite, Moabite, desert god, etc., etc. But again, the title of the article, I mean, it's written by a Jew as well. So people don't look it up. This is the oldest inscription, the first time Yahweh is mentioned. Is based on a Moabite pagan seal. And you already see almost enough paganism to produce this Yahweh name. So Yahweh is what? I'm going to say it again. It's a pagan god. Nothing would make Satan happier than to corrupt the name of God. All right, I'm going to lose people, but that's my job. You came here to watch me because of truth, right? And I don't want you to saying the wrong name of God all this time. That's the reason why. All right? So as much as you might hate me and I love you instead... Go ahead and unsubscribe, all right? I love you and pray for you guys.